have a review for you. It's the Stila Field of Florals Convertible Color Dual Lip and Cheek Palette. And in my Spring Essentials, I made a pretty big claim that this was my favorite makeup purchase of 2015 so far. So I thought it deserved its own video so I could show you not only swatches, but some demos of me applying them to my cheeks and lips. So in this review, I'm going to give you an overview about the product, then we'll move into the demo and swatches. And then at the end, I'll give you my review. So the palette is exclusive to Sephora. It's $49 and you get 12 different shades. In each pan, each pan contains 0.035 ounces of product. And if you want to compare that, a full size convertible color, those are $25 each and you get 1.15 ounce in those. So if you're just comparing ounces to ounces, it's still a good deal. It's not the best deal of all time, but I think the true value comes in that you're getting so many different colors and each of these can be used on both your lips and cheeks. So those are the basics about the product. Now I'm going to go ahead and move into the demo and swatches. One of the main reasons I wanted to do a demo is to show you just how easily these apply over foundation. Right now I have all my foundation done and powder on top of that, and I'm gonna be able to show you just how easily these apply. So you can definitely use your fingers, and I think because of how the pan's situated, maybe that's how they intend for you to do it, but I personally, if I have the option, I always like to use a brush over my fingers and I have found that the little elf stipple brush that you can get for like $3 at Target is perfect for fitting in these pans. So I think for me, I'll say that I like the lighter colors on my cheeks and then the deeper colors on my lips, but I'll show you a little bit of both, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with one of the lighter cheek colors and apply that. I'm pinching my elf stipple brush and I'm going to press in maybe three times into the shade Peony. I'm first going to tap the color in and then I'm gonna use very light buffing motions. And I wanna be very light with this because I don't wanna disturb the foundation and powder that I have on underneath. That's a really light application. So I'm going in with a little bit more Apini to show you that these colors are blendable. So I'm gonna do the same thing. First tap the color where I want it and then use light buffing motions to blend it in. So the color never really sets on my cheeks, but it also doesn't feel tacky. And because it's not, you know, transforming into a powder like some cream blushes do, you're always getting just that little bit of dewy glow, which I think is perfect, especially as we're moving into the warmer months. I'm gonna have mismatching cheeks for a second because I wanna show you how one of the brighter colors apply. I've done the same thing. I just cleaned off my stipple brush a little bit, and now I've dipped into the shade Fuchsia, which is one of the brighter colors down in the bottom corner. So you can see that even though fuchsia is super bright in the pan, I have a lot of control because the first layer goes on so sheer. And for someone like me who has really fair skin, I probably would stop here and I wouldn't build it up a lot. But if you have a medium or even deep skin tone, I think this color is stunning and you could build it up and really make it that bright pop of color. So this is one layer of fuchsia applied. And I will say that when I first got this palette, there were a couple days that I overdid it and I got a little bit of blush face, but it's very easy to correct over application with this, either with the brush that you use to apply foundation or a damp beauty blender is perfect. Just press it over it. It'll remove a little bit of product so you don't look overwhelmed. Okay, I tried to even out my cheeks the best I could, so hopefully it doesn't look too bad, but you could definitely apply these with your fingers. If you were gonna do that, I would just take a clean finger, dip into the pan, and then dot the color on your cheeks, and then use two fingers and lightly blend it in. My only issue with that, I think you might pull up some of the foundation if you're a little bit too tough, so you just have to be very use very gentle fingers to do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move into some lip swatches, and my favorite colors for the lips all come from this side, so I'm gonna try on a couple of my favorites for you. This first one I'm applying just with my finger, and it's in the shade Rose. This is the color in the pan, and this is how it looks on my lips. You can see it's a little bit softer and lighter on my lips, but the texture is really nice, and it has a really pretty shine to it. Now I'm applying one of the brighter shades, which is hibiscus, and I'm using a lip brush. And you could use your fingers or a lip brush for this. They work well with both. Although I will say using your finger kind of presses the product better into your lips and it lasts a little bit longer. So this is hibiscus in the pan and on my lips. And I think now, although this is gonna be bad because all of these pretty much, all the light colors look horrendous on me, but just for the purpose of the video, I will try one on so you can see how it looks. This is Gerbera and it's easily one of my least favorite colors to wear on my lips. I think these kind of pale, milky, pinky, peach nudes just drain all life out of my face. I would never wear this on my lips, but it is absolutely beautiful on my cheeks. So that's my thing with this palette for somebody with my skin tone. I love the deep saturated colors on my lips, but the lighter shades definitely work better on my cheeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply one last lip color. It's gonna be my favorite from this palette. Now I have on Tulip, which is my favorite shade out of the palette to wear on my lips. 
lips. I love the name and I love a good berry color. And now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite things about this palette and that is how you can easily blend these together. So I'm gonna take one of the brighter colors. This is Gladiola and it's kind of the orange color. I'm gonna take a little bit on my finger and I'm gonna apply it right over and really blend it in. So adding Gladiola, which is kind of that sherbet orange, just lightened up tulip and made it look a little bit more coral, but you can also take maybe a color, like if you're like me and you wouldn't wear some of these really you know, light nudes, you could add them to some of the deeper shades and make them more muted. So I'm gonna do that now with one of these brownie nudes. I'm gonna take Magnolia. So mixing these two together, Tulip and Magnolia, gives me almost a muted mauve color, which I love. So now let me just get into a straight swatches so you can see them all lined up. Okay, here are some swatches, and I tried to swatch them in the exact same place that there are in the palette, so you can kind of compare how they look in the pan and how they look on my skin. The top row is Lilium, Magnolia, and Tulip. The second row is Camellia, Peony, and Rose. The orangey sherbet is Gladiola, and then in the middle is Peach Blossom and Hibiscus there at the end. And then the last row is Gerbera, which looked so bad on my lips, Petunia, and then Fuchsia at the end. Moving into the review, the packaging is slim but sturdy and it has a really nice magnetic closure and it has a fantastic mirror. So I think this would just be an amazing travel palette because it would travel well and you're getting all these different colors. It also has the names very nicely printed on the back, which I love. So none of those annoying, you know, clear inserts. So it's all on the back. The only downside to the packaging is that the pans are so close. So if you wanted to use a bigger brush, like you had a favorite really large stippling brush, it might be hard to get it into. But again, if you did what I do and just kind of pinch your stippling brush and kind of dip it in or use your fingers, you can get around that. As for colors, I think the shades are beautiful and it definitely does look like a field of florals, which is perfect for this time of year. My only issue is that I think some of the colors are redundant. I don't know if we needed all these nudie shades. I think they could have been swapped out maybe for a true red or a neutral pink or something a little bit more in the purple family, but I would recommend this to a broad variety of skin tones. If you're fair like me, I think this palette is gorgeous and I think even up into the deep skin tones a lot of people could use this the formula is what makes this palette so special there is no shimmer or glitter they are all every single color is a straight cream and they are so buildable and that's what makes so many different skin tones be able to use this because you have so much control the shades never dry down on your lips so you're getting some of that glowy dewiness which I think is beautiful and on the cheeks it has fantastic lasting power easily throughout my full work day so you're getting a full eight hours maybe if I was going out to eat right after work I might want to do a little bit of touch-up but I think the lasting power on the cheeks is fantastic I can't say the same about the lips. It doesn't last hardly at all on the lips. So if you're buying this as a lip palette, I might caution you a little bit. I think you need to either use a lip liner or a lip primer just to help grab and hold on to those colors longer. So my final thoughts, the only two cons I can think of are the couple redundant colors and that it doesn't last super long on the lips, but overall the palette is beautiful. I've been reaching for it over and over again. It's convenient, it's fun to play and mix the shades together. So I think the palette is awesome. Definitely worth your time if you're looking to add some spring shades into your makeup bag. And I, there has been some talk that maybe Sephora will be having another VIB sale in April. So this is a palette that I might consider, but I hope this was helpful. If there's something I missed, please leave me some questions down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in my next video.